Welcome to Virtualize Everything. Today we're going to be looking at installing MariaDB in Docker using both the .env file and volumes in order to securely store our data separate from the host and manage all of our passwords separate from our Docker Compose file. To get started with this process, if you don't already know how to, I suggest that you follow my video on installing Docker in a Proxbox container. Although you don't need Proxbox to follow along with this tutorial, and this can be done on bare metal, I will be today filming this video using Proxmox. The steps shouldn't vary at all, as I won't be setting up the container in this video. I've gone ahead, I've produced the container, from a cloned image and logged in at this point. The first thing we're going to want to do as in any Linux install is to go ahead and make sure our operating system is up to date with all updates installed. To do this, we're going to use the command sudo apt update, and then I'm gonna string it together with two AMPA stamps and use sudo apt upgrade dash y. Go ahead, enter my sudo password, and let this run. And I did go ahead and reissue the upgrade command because I misspelled upgrade. When this is finished, I'll be back with you and we'll start with the rest of the process. All right, so now that we have our operating system updated, it's time to start the installation or configuration for the installation of our Docker container for MariaDB. The first thing we need to do is choose a path or choose a location to place all of our files in for this process. I'm going to be using my home folder for my username. This may not be the right choice for you, but as this container will be disposed of after this video, I feel this is the simplest way to do so. But if you did need to move around or create a folder, you can use a combination of the commands cd and mkdir to create what you need to, for your file location. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and start by creating my Docker Compose YAML file that's going to hold my Docker configuration for MariaDB. To do that, I'm going to enter the command sudo nano docker compose dot YAML and press enter. Now here I'm going to go ahead and copy the pre-made configuration file that I have for this particular video. This configuration file will be provided for you in the video section below. Whether it's a link to my website or copied and pasted directly into the notes, it will be provided. So there's a few different sections we want to look at for this file as we're going to be using a .env file as well as volumes and we haven't really done that and this isn't part of the standard docker compose configuration said in quotes but I do want to go ahead and explain it to it. So the first part that we're going to look at is how this environments part. And this environments part, you notice that we're actually calling variables. These variables are going to go back to a separate file inside of the Docker Compose main directory, which we discussed was my user account prior. What they are going to link to is a file called an env file, and inside of that file is going to contain this actual data for these particular variables. The next part is volumes. Volumes is going to be where we're going to store a secure image called secure data in our case, and then the path that it's going to link to inside of our Docker install. The last part is this entire block. This entire block here goes into detail about how we want to create that image that we're going to store all of our secure data in, and then how we want to mount it or bind it to our Docker container. Now that we understand how this file's working, let's go ahead and press Control X to save it and then Y and enter. At this point, we're good to go ahead and make that file that I've discussed, that env file, and we're going to again use nano to do that. So the command is going to be sudo nano.env and we'll press enter. And once again, 
I have provided for you a brief file layout that can be used for accomplishing the creation of this file. Now I heavily suggest that you go in and edit the contents of this for both usernames and passwords that are unique to your application. Today I'm going to be using the variables that you see here, but when you create your application, I do suggest that you edit these for yourself. Again, I'll save this with control X, Y, and enter. And then we want to restrict the permissions of this file to level 600. So we're going to use the command sudo chmod 600.env as shown here and press enter. chmod 600 is going to only allow the owner of the file or the user account that created the file to interact with it. So once you're logged out and your Docker application's running and you've done all your configuration, no one else is gonna be able to interact with this file. The next thing we want to do is actually create our storage path for our Docker volume mount that we configured inside of our Docker compose file. And we're going to do this with an MKDIR directory on this path right here. Pressing enter is going to create it. And once again, we are going to further restrict the permissions of this file by using chmod 700. chmod 700 is going to restrict the permissions of this particular directory to that of only the root user. With all of this work done, we're good to go ahead and use Docker Compose to start up this file. Now, I wanna note that you don't traditionally have to use Docker Compose with the sudo command if you've correctly set up Docker, but we are going to have to use the sudo command here because of the way we've configured the permissions on the files that Docker has to access that of the secure data file here. So let's go ahead and put sudo and then we'll run docker compose up dash d the compose up is going to of course start the file and the dash d is going to do that silently so that we can continue to interact with our server once this has been deployed. We'll hit enter and the process of pulling this down from docker hub is going to go a little while and I'll be back with you when this is completed to look at the next steps. Now that we've pulled down MariaDB and successfully started this, we can go ahead and check to make sure MariaDB is running. Docker is usually pretty good about terminating the running of an app when it hasn't started successfully. So this is a really good first check to make sure everything is working correctly. And we can do that with Docker PS. And you can see here that we do have a MariaDB container up and running when we execute that Docker PS command. Now, the next thing we can do if we want to interact more with our container, either to verify it's up and running or to check data being input by an application or even input data really, is we can install the MariaDB client core on this system and that's going to allow us to just check and verify that everything's interacting with this container correctly. Now as your build goes further and you further develop out your software I wouldn't suggest this step but for right now for testing it's a really good step just to verify your software is working and the data is being input into your database correctly for your project. So the command to install this particular software is sudo get install or sudo apt install mariadb slash client slash core and we'll hit enter and let this install giving it y and pressing enter. Now that that is installed we can go ahead and log into our database and begin interacting with it. Now to log into it, we're going to use the command that you see pasted here below. There's a couple of things I wanna note here. The your user will be have to be modified to whatever you configured your user to be inside of your ENV file. 
And when you press enter, you're going to want to enter the password that you configured inside of that env file. If everything goes right, you should see a login just as we did here, and you can begin creating your database and interacting with your database at this point as you so choose. We now have persistent storage set up with MariaDB inside of a Docker container here running on Ubuntu 24.0. I hope you enjoyed this video of how to get this set up and working with a little bit of added security through your ENV file as well as how to modify some of your variables to add a little bit of security and your storage to be persistent and managed by Docker volumes. This isn't an end-all be-all security tutorial for databases, but it will serve as a good start to get a home lab user or beginning user up and running and working on their desired project. As always, have a good night and please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to help virtualize everything continue to grow and bring you more content like this.